Hello everyone, my name is Notepad Adnan and I write games for fun. So, what are we doing today? What we are doing today is we are going to be fixing up a game called Grand Belm Dancing in the Midnight Realm, which is, a, which is a magical girl mecha game about fighting each other and killing each other. Ooh, it looks like I actually have someone here. I don't know if you can see that on... Oh, you cannot see that on the screen. Let me just do, 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 look uh, right there in the corner. I got someone actually who was looking at this because I posted it earlier. So what is this? What is this game? This game is a game about playing uh, magical girls who are also in mechs uh, who want to blow the shit out of each other. That came out wrong, but... You also may be wondering what that beautiful sound is. That is me eating uh, crackers, because I'm kind of hungry still. Do we play things fast and loose here on this stream? We, we, don't, we don't conform to no, no rules. Or decency. We're actually a mukbang. So, one of the things we were looking at on the prelim notes, these are our list of things to do for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm trying to find more stuff, more of the merrier right here for Arminox creation. But as of right now, we're going to be working on in and out of illusion actions. Now, what does that mean? Well, in the show, in the show is that the characters often split their time between being in the illusion and their army ox and fighting each other in really over, overly dramatic combat. This is me opening a T. And the other half is them in the real world dealing with all the problems associated with it. Now, as of right now, my current system is uh, roll a bunch of D4s and hope for the best, with these being my difficulty ranges. I'm probably going to change that. <laughs> Because, as you can probably tell, they're not very good. It's actually kind of awful. So, what we, what I plan on doing is a variety of... Well, I don't quite know yet. Yeah, I do not go into these streams with a plan, really. I go into them with a desire and a method to do it. So... Overall, let's just think about what we did. This is effectively out of the illusion, i.e. out of mecha combat. So as of right now, we have all our characters roll their attribute in D4s. Now, with the maximum attribute, if we go all the way down here, Oh, we, we gotta go fur further down. We can be up to 10, or as low as technically 1, or 0 even. So, that's kind of a issue. So what I'm, th what I'm debating on doing is option 1. Is I just make it a flat d20 roll, and that's kind of your in in the real world you're rolling a d20 with a five percent chance of doing a little bit of everything. I can also re then reduce the uh, difficulty down by quite a bit because as of right now I was doing it based on these d4s. As you can kind of see, the range is kind of weird. Option two is making it a 2d6 system. I actually originally debated on doing that, and the curve worked. It was just kind of a, it's, um, the disconnect between Arminox fights and real world fights was kind of my biggest issue there, or real world issues. So it's kind of like, how do I want to handle this? Eh. Mm. Yeah, going with D20 might be the best there. Do I need to sneeze? I can feel... <coughs> oh, God. Super, super duper sorry there, folks. I think I'm going to blast someone's eardrums out. Ah. Okay, I, I could feel it. It was there. It was coming. I'm just like, I don't know when you're, when, when you're coming. I'm like, I, do I have a moment to, to turn off the audio? No, I don't. It knew. It knew what I was going to do. So, we're going to go with the D20 idea. A squeaky chair. 
And so, let's see. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to break this bit up a little bit. I'm going to This is my life of me slowly debating because it's warming up where I am and that means my allergies are coming out in force and I get really bad allergies uh, which is to say uh, world some the world decides that it wants to or does not want to make my life miserable so plug my phone in actually so I can see what time it is. Glorious mukbanging. That's the term, right? It's a uh, let's see. When a character attempts an action with a chance of failure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Dancing in the Midnight Realm. Wandering the Waking World. Or Wandering the Waking World or Dancing in the No, no, we'll go with Dancing in the Midnight Realm. Uh, attempts in action. Hence a failure. Is posing another character. They are performing a check. Or not the character is in the illusion of the real world determines what dice are rolled. Also, apologies for the later stream. If uh, anyone's actually no one's actually watching this, but maybe it's just for myself. Uh, because I decided to take a nap, my little 15 minute, uh, break earlier today, and, uh, that 15 little minute break on life, uh, turned into an hour and a half of me, uh, face down on my bed, uh, sleep, because I was very tired for some reason. Dice are rolled. Dancing in the Midnight Realm, the Illusion. Beat guy. Current beat die plus their attribute. Beat. Beat die. Determined by the number of actions performed up to that point and can be reset upon performing a 
the same action twice. Or performing a combo finisher. Name pending. Character rolls a d20 plus plus their their attribute. In the wandering world. In situations where a static number is needed, a target number, TN, is assigned. I use the term narrator, yeah. Assigned by the narrator. Please assigned by the narrator. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a five easy. Well, you know, five is pretty easy, even if you have absolutely no attributes in it. Like, uh, actually, let's see, D twenty. Check the D twenty SRD. Five ten fifteen, yeah. Five ten fifteen twenty twenty-five. Average challenge difficult. Very difficult. There we go. And equal to higher than target number, they are successful in clear situation. If they roll less than target number, they have failed and suffer the consequences. Back here, you can't escape your suffering. And this magical girl anime, you are going to be here when we talk about playing the game. Okay, I think she just disappears because I think she gets deleted, so I'm gonna throw her down there for right now. Uh, welcome to Google Docs, everyone. It's a wild, wild world. Maybe wondering why I'm deciding to put heading one and two here. I really don't need to, but I feel it's necessary to maintain a, a, a consistency throughout the uh, the document, mostly when it comes to these things. And it's also signaling to people like, hey, all right, look for this. So, no, 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 get up, get up. And put you right. Put you right there. There you go. You're a Maguka. Well, not you're not Maguka. You're a Mahoshojo. So, yeah. Okay, so, looking here, we have our base attributes. I think our attributes work pretty well. I 
what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this control X all the way down here and place everything right up here instead now why would I do this why am I moving playing the game here well this is kind of more background stuff I feel it's still important but overall I don't think you can skip this section pretty easy like you don't really need to read any of this but it's good to read in case you do want to know more about it but you don't need to so you can just skip right to playing the game if you really want to mostly because I'm actually pretty informal here so move over a little bit man. there we go Like magical girl suffering, mostly when you have to get moved around in a document from a subpar mecha game written by some otaku. So, here we are. So, who's ready for more mukbanging? These attributes are based on Arminox. Aptitude, reflexes, magic, aggression, nerves, observation, expression. Okay. So what do I want to write here? Well, I think what I want to do I want to hit that button right there. Move this down a little bit. I'm going to add in a section effectively saying Uh, slightly injured, not really injured, seriously injured, dead. These. Mm -hmm. yeah. These tears represent the physical body only harm the cancer before they expire.
suffers. In the real world, or being injured in the illusion. Now, why I'm making this uh, specific stipulation on the real world? Oh, yeah, negative five per two. Is what 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 I'm seeing? This is is you getting stabbed in the in the kidney effectively with a shank. You're going to be not exactly doing too hot. Again, you're not really supposed to get injured. That's kind of the point. Is that this is a mecha battle game, and you're supposed to get blown out of the sky. Getting blown out of the sky, very different than getting shanked with a knife. So. Oh, well, 5, 10, 5, 10, 50. Yeah, so effectively you're actually going to do negative 3. Yeah, negative 3 per wound. So that would be 3, 6, 9, and then dead. Actually, any time a regular weapon is used, for example, a knife, they would immediately take two wounds, levels of him cannot defend themselves from it. Alternatively, if the character is directly attacked by an Arminox and the illusion, they immediately die. They immediately die. So, if I get shot by my by a giant power mech, I'm going to die. Yeah, simple as. So, what I'm actually going to do, is I'm going to make a note on this, actually, is I'm going to split the game up in a little bit in the Game Master section into two sections. So I'm going to call each of them chapters. So what, what is a chapter? A chapter is roughly either a, a fight in Grand ba a fight, or it is a social situation. Now, 
a fight can be multiple sessions. Social situation may be multiple sessions. But they're all part of the same chapter. Or they could be one session. It, it, it's kind of up to you, the narrator, to determine how long or how short these last. So a, effectively speaking, when I say a, a start of every chapter, it is the start of every one of these pretty much arcs. to the start of every chapter. So effectively, anytime you use a weapon on someone, let's say a knife, you have to make a dedicated effort to stab them again, even if they're rolling at a negative six. And the goal being, sneak up on someone with a knife and stab them to win. Don't actually do that. That's not, I'm not advocating for that. I, what I'm saying is that if you want to be the most optimal about your uh, dealing with the opposition, even though you can't fight in actual mecha combat in the mecha combat game, you can always just stab your opponent. Eh. Uh, let's see, I'm actually keep saying I'll take two in tears. So, I'm actually still debating on whether or not I want to put in a, uh, dare I say it, a Benny mechanic or something similar to that. Effectively, a mechanic saying, uh, giving characters a little bit more leeway to say, eh, ah, no, nah, like, oh god, I got shot, stabbed, killed, murdered, or variations of getting horribly maimed by something. I'm not dead yet. I'm still debating on that. As of right now, I'm not going to, because I'm evil. Uh. 
Okay, so in and out of the illusion actions are pretty, pretty sorted out. Again, I, I don't want to make make us say like roll aggression versus observation because it kind of depends on what the situation is. Of like, oh, someone's rushing at you with a knife. It's their aggression versus your reflexes. Or, hey, someone's trying to magically kill you. It's your magic versus their magic. Or, hey, someone's literally trying this to taunt you and being a, di being a bitch. Roll nerves versus expression or something. It's That's kind of the idea there. So I don't want to make like a committed, like, yeah, roll X versus Y, and that's how you determine combat in the real world now. So, flesh out the participants of Grand Bound. So... My idea here, if I were to put it somewhere, I would have to put it probably mm, I'd probably put it right here. But my idea is if I scroll all the way up here. Let's take our ran let's take our list of magicians here. I'll we'll paste them right here. Effectively saying is a familiar familiar magicians get X amount of points to spend on attributes. Hermetic mages get Y amount of points as well as roll a D10 and. And roll a d10 in addition. Free magicians simply uh, will roll. They get a z amount of points, but roll d6 or something to each attribute. Finally, Lost Magicians are just roll some dice. That'd be my idea. So, kind of the more formally trained you are, quote-unquote, the less randomness you have in your own abilities. And he's saying, but that's not fair! I want to be Superman! And why, 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 why is there a chance that someone who doesn't have any magical ability whatsoever can be stronger than me. Well, they kind of touch upon that in the show a little bit with the idea of sometimes people are just not lucky enough. You can train all you want, but you just aren't strong enough. So... Hmm... So let's see, so familial mages, we'll make it at 20 attribute points, that'll be a kind of our base. And if we count everything, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's 7 attributes. Bring up my handy dandy calculator just because I want to get the exact number. 20 divided by 7. Effectively speaking, you can have 2.85 or 86 if we want to round up in each attribute. And that means Hermetic Mages, Three Mages, Lost Mages. So Hermetic, let's say they would get 15 attribute points and add a d10. So that would be 7 divided by... That's not it. 15 divided by 7. So they would get 2.14 in each attribute with the range of either adding 
So if we did the absolute, absolute minimum, they'd get... So, so that would range from 16 to 25 for attribute-wise. So we're looking at... 16 divided by 7, so effectively 2.28, well, 2.29, let's round up to 25 divided by 7, 3.57 in each attribute. And again, you may be wondering why I'm doing this, like, well, obviously no one's going to have a 2 point, you know, 2.29 in any attribute. But if you can kind of determine the rough average of how things are going to go, you can kind of see. This is the lower your average is. A familial mage, let's say for a hermetic mage, you roll poorly and get only 16 points. You're going to start dump. You're going to dump all your points in one your specific thing that you want to do, not really anything else. You're not going to want to dump it in there. But if you have more points, you're obviously going to want to spread them around a little bit more because you have more to work with. And my goal is to keep the familiar mages roughly in the middle. They have the most options because they know exactly what they're getting right off the bat. I'm a familiar mage. I'm going to get this. And this is how I want to build my character. While someone like a hermetic mage, they have to gamble a little bit. Where they may be very strong, they may not be very strong. Kind of depends on how the attributes fall. So, free mages. Let's see. It's all trained to war, it's not trained at all. So, let's call it at 10 attribute points. At a d6. So, minimum. You'd have 17, and maximum you'd have 40. That'd be your range for it. Jesus. Okay. Because 10. Christ, wouldn't. No, it'd be. be 52 technically because you get 10 as your base then a six to each so if you roll six on everything you're gonna get a maximum massive amount of points to work with well, okay that's not how I want it um cut it in half five attribute points and add a d10 10 attribute points and add 2d10. So that would make the range 12 to 12 to 30. So that would be 12 divided by 7. 1.71. One. Finally, I'm not even going to bother rounding it because it's, seven, it's 0 0.714 to 4.2829. It's still pretty radical. Like, that's still a pretty large jump. So Lost Mages, I just want to do roll 1d10 for each attribute. So effectively speaking, your range is is 10 to 70. So divided by 7, that would be 1.43 to 10. It would just be 10. Uh, all right, that's a little bit. <laughs> mm. Let 
Yeah, you can see now why I um, am questioning this system a little bit. Because this is, as I like to call, a nightmare on wheels. This is what you also come for, is hardcore mathematics, where I lose my mind about numbers. Let's see, so... If I would... So let's tone that down, let's see, you have 30, let's do... I want to avoid... Characters having a zero in every stat. So that would be eight to thirty five. That might work. So it'd be one point one four to a max of thirty five, which would just be flame flat five. So overall, if you want the highest consistent rating, the familial mage of 20 points just to distribute. <sighs> and he dies. 2d10. So on average, for 2d10, you're going to roll a 10. So, on average, for this one at least, you should get 20 points. So for 3d10, what's your average? Your average is 16 to 17. That, again, this is just perfectly averages. Nothing more, nothing less. And you may say, well, no, you, you can't base things off averages. And I say you can definitely base things off averages. And you almost need to. So, let's see, let's see, 15, 16 to 17 would be your average. I'll just click every button except the one I need. Hmm. Okay, so, lost mages have a statistical higher likelihood. So, let's say your average is going to be about... I'll even lay on the, the low side. 21 to 20, you know, no, it's 21 to 22. That's going to be your average. So, your average here. Going to be 21. And your average. For this, let's just call it, I'll just call it a 5. It's technically 5.5, .5, but that'd be 20 point, so it'd be 20.5 average. So, my, my guesstimation's roughly correct of how I wanted these numbers to turn out. Where the Lost Mages, you have a higher likelihood of being good and better overall. But you also have a chance of uh, being a miserable failure of a human being and barely qualified to even participate. On the other hand, being familial means you get a lot more, you know, it's, you're a lot more consistent in how you can build your character up. So I think I'm going to use this for now at least. So. I'm going to actually put you down there, including you from 
Magical Girl sight. I can't remember your name, but you were pretty, you were pretty adorable. And your brother was the best character in the series. Even though he rampantly abused you. But that doesn't mean anything, because he was a cool character. A freaking weirdo, too. I loved him. So, what do we want to do? So, we're not actually going to add all of these. It's just like, well, you have a, an average of 21. No. So, one to two. Or engines. I can actually spell the term in. to participate. Point attribute points to assign and a Squeaky, squeaky chair. I have some more of my, my crackers.
So you, one thing too, with the origins, what I can do later on is say we are gradually moving forward with it, the project's roughly uh, achieving the end. What I can do is take what I like about it and add additional things. I can add more things to these. The more mechanics you put in, the more mechanics you have to use. Mostly later on, we'll see, for example, the chapter system. I just came up with that, but I think it's going to work pretty well, mostly for the type of game this is. Cream cheese all over me, because I'm a sturdy boy. What a dirty, dirty boy. Oh, God, my back. Um... A little crumb cracker left. Hell, get out of my way. Oh, no. Control shift eight. Determine your origin. We're going to make that heading two. Do, 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 new, 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 new. Bad. Uh, we're going to. I'm actually going to put a side note here. I think it's worth it just because people who might see it. And side note. On the math. Uh, Fifteen. Plus D10. Range from sixteen. So, effectively what this is, this little section right here is mostly for people who are like, well, I just want to pick this because it's the most operative, you, know, oper, you know, opportunist for me, then why would you pick anything else? It's like, this is the math behind it, and why it's the way that it is. I should technically put a 1 there. 
Uh, space, 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 space. All right. We got the math wrapped up. We've got our origins wrapped up. We did a little bit here. We also added a section on health. So what is, so we've been streaming for, let me just take a quick check look here. Uh, we've been streaming for about an hour now. So I'm gonna call it here. So what did we get done today? We got, if I can click on the right thing, well, we fleshed out these two. So I'm gonna mark these in red. It's not quite the red I was thinking of, Google Docs, but yeah. So all we have to do tomorrow is magicians and their focuses. And that's what we're going to do. We're gonna clean up some of the magicians and focuses. And pretty much my idea for that is, in simple terms, is I would like that to be kind of the outside mechanics while your, you know, kind of your combat section. I, I want there to be a clear, clear divide between we are dancing in the midnight realm, we're a bunch of chuckle fuck, you know, we're a bunch of high school girls being kawaii at each other, uh, and kind of have that juxtaposition be one of the core tenets of the game almost, is that you're going from a magical girl game to a hardcore battle mecha uh, camp, you know, story at snap of your fingers. And that, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy that idea because you have a little bit of things there. So the focuses are part of that uh, latter category, the normal people doing normal things, but they have magic and kind of influencing each other with it rather than the hardcore mecha battles. And how I plan on doing that is I don't know where I would put it and uh, I, you know, I'll put it somewhere uh, put it right there chapters and such is kind of you're going from chapter you know the first half of your chapter you might be working with your friends and you know being and solving like a really simple crisis while the second half is, all right, let's now blow the girl that we were helping out of the sky using hardcore laser battles. <laughs> you know, kind of the, the juxtaposition is it's like, hey, we're good friends with this person in the real world, but we also need to defeat her in this fake world. Or maybe we can work together. Or maybe there is no such thing as compromise. So it's kind of that, that juxtaposition is what I'm going to go for. And that's kind of what the chapters are going to be and kind of like the focuses and the ma how the magic works in the Arminox is your focuses are your things in that first bit, that human bit. While in the actual combat section, the mecha battle, part of the mecha battle royale game, is you, your focus do it doesn't play as big as a role, but you can still kind of influence things. So I'll have to, I'll have to keep working on it and think, and think about it some more. But... Thank you all for watching so far. If you're watching on YouTube right now, please like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Uh, you might notice everything is moving around. That is me desperately attempting to move OBS, make sure it doesn't break itself. Outside of that, uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day.